Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. But first, let me thank you for coming to my channel. I really do appreciate it when you come to visit my videos. And you keep coming back and back and back, and that I appreciate a great deal. So thank you. The first item I have on today's agenda is titled Less Care at Higher Cost, The Medicare Advantage Paradox. <laughs> I'm not sure this is really a paradox, but I'll read it to you. Celebrating a Medicare Advantage, MA, milestone. Enrollment in those private plans surpassed 30 million. The health insurance industry trade group proclaimed MA a good deal for members and taxpayers. The first part of that claim is debatable while the second part is false. Medicare Payment Advisory Commission, the nonpartisan agency reporting to Congress, recently estimated that MA overpayments added $82 billion to taxpayer costs for Medicare in 2023 and $612 billion between 2007 and 2024. That's more than a half a trillion dollars. Two insurer strategies drive MA overpayments, diagnosis upcoding and avoiding enrollees who are ill and do not contribute to profits. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services pays MA plans using a co complex risk adjustment formula incorporating the diagnosis plans report. Hence, insurers can boost revenues by inflating the number and severity of each enrollee's diagnoses. A wave of MA upcoding after CMS introduced risk-adjusted payments in 20, 2004 triggered Congress to instruct the agency to apply an automatic deflator, currently 5.9%. Yet, according to Medicaid, a Medipac, Upcoding relative to the diagnoses coded for comparative fee for service Medicare beneficiaries is far higher, generating net overpayments of 13% last year. Uh, you know, one thing you can definitely count on is when you uh, do business with the government and the government writes the rules, the businesses are going to figure out how to get around the rules. It's just that simple. And the insurance companies are taking advantage of the law, which they have a right to do. It may not be ethical, but they have a right to do it. And we, the taxpayers, get stuck with the bill. That's what you get when you have federalized health care. Doesn't matter what country you're in. There's always going to be waste. There's always going to be overcharges. There's always going to be difficulties. This is my second one. Elon Musk warns his, or Elon Musk, excuse me, warns his companies would ban Apple devices after open AI deal. Unacceptable security violation. Basically, uh, if you haven't heard the notice, Apple has announced that they're going to be including AI in their new iPhone. Not quite sure what that's going to do, but apparently one of the things it will do is uh, Siri will consult OpenAI if it doesn't know the answer to something. So billionaire Elon Musk said Monday he would ban Apple devices at his companies if the iPhone uh, maker in integrates OpenAI. I uh, can't. I can barely read this. My glasses, for some reason, are not working too good today. Maybe it's my eyes. Um, open AI at the operating system level. Let me reread that. Billionaire Elon Musk said Monday he would ban Apple devices after his companies, at his companies, if the iPhone maker integrates open AI at the operating system level. That is an unacceptable security violation, Musk who is the CEO of electric vehicle maker Tesla and rocket maker SpaceX and owner of social media company X said in a post on X. Uh, and visitors will have to check their Apple devices at the door where they will be stored in a Faraday cage, he said. 
if you don't know what a Faraday cage is, it's a um, it's it's a basically a metal grid cage that prevents radiation from escaping. So uh, the phones, if they're put in a Faraday cage, would not work. Okay, next item on the agenda. Alito and Roberts secretly recorded in latest attempt to undermine Supreme Court. There's been a lot of news lately about how people on the so-called left, and you know I don't believe in left and right, I believe in anarchy and totalitarianism, but uh, there's been a lot of uh, jabber lately about how people on the left are trying to undermine the Supreme Court. I don't know why, but... Uh, Basically, what happened was a liberal activist went to a uh, dinner of uh, where the, the uh, Supreme Court justices were attending and posed as a religious conservative and asked them questions and recorded their answers. And if you read the article, I don't really see anything wrong with their answers, although a lot of people are freaking out about it. Um, and I don't see anything wrong with her recording, although I don't know if, if, you know, if that was allowed, if it was permitted. And they, and they actually said that the people that uh, sponsored the dinner said that it was a violation of their rules and that that person would be removed from the membership. But anyway, uh, I think any kind of undercover recording of government officials, whoever they are, is perfectly fine. We ought to know more about these people. We ought to, they ought to be open and transparent with us, and they're not, and so we have to record them. But anyway, uh, it's an interesting article, and like I always do, I'll put the links in the description, and you can read it for yourself. This is a follow-up article to that one in uh, Rolling Stone. And actually, it's about Rolling Stone. It's in The Federalist. I'm sorry. It says, Rolling Stone melts down over Alita being a Christian who believes in limited government. Now, um, if they're going to melt down at Alito, they're going to really melt down at me because I am a Christian who believes in limited government. I believe, our, and I've said this many times, I believe that governments should be uh, described on a scale from anarchy on one side to totalitarianism on the other, and that every government on earth fits somewhere in that linear framework. Either they're more towards the anarchy side or they're more towards the totalitarian side. And my belief is that the least amount of government we need to do the job is probably what's best for us, for our freedoms and for our safety. I just highlighted a few things in here. People in this country who believe in God have got to keep fighting for that to return our country to a place of godliness. Windsor continued in response. Windsor is the undercover activist who's recording. Alito says, I agree with you. I agree with you, Alito said, to the horror of Rolling Stone, which claimed in its headline that Alito was caught saying such a well, truthful thing. He was caught saying, <laughs> okay, let's read this again. People in this country who believe in God have got to keep fighting for that to return our country to a place of godliness, Windsor continued. And he said, I would agree with that. And we're freaking out over that. <laughs> it's, it's amazing to me how in the last few decades, our country has turned from uh, what I would have considered a Christian nation into a secular nation where Christianity is actually looked down on as something evil. That, that just blows my mind. People just don't understand God at all. Moving on. But surely a justice meant to protect the Constitution would be best suited to interpret laws in a way that closely aligns with the Founders' intentions if they too share the same bedrock principles as, let's say, Thomas Jefferson. During his second inaugural address, Jefferson said that he needed to needed the favor of that being to whose hand we are, to his hands we are, who led our forefathers as Israel of old from their native land and planted them in a country flowing with all the new, all the necess necessaries and comforts of life. 
In fact, the very va last line of the Declaration of Independence presupposes the nation's firm reliance on God. But these answers, according to Rolling Stone, show a partisan member of a hard-right judicial faction. Okay, whatever, you know, I mean... <sighs> One of the things that irritates me more than anything else is the way that the press continues to rile people up and get them all angry and upset by misleading phraseology and narratives that they use. And it just drives me crazy. It really does. Now, this last item is quite bothersome. FBI asked co-workers of bureau employee about Trump support vaccine beliefs. Now, if you know anything at all about the American justice system, you know that it is supposed to be nonpartisan. Now, you know, it's, it's hard for any human being to be completely nonpartisan because we all have our opinions. We all think what we think is right and what other people think is wrong. And so you really have to work hard to be open-minded. But within that context, as far as is humanly possible, a, a Justice Department should be as nonpartisan as it possibly can. In other words, it goes after crimes, not people who have beliefs. Last week on June 8th, the whistleblower and advocacy firm Empower Oversight sent a letter to Justice Department Inspector General Michael Horowitz along with a packet of documents. The company represents an FBI employee whose security clearance was revoked after he attended the January 6th protests. I, I read, talked about him the other day on my channel in Daily News. No one disputes the Bureau's right to investigate, but the Bureau's security division did more than that, sending a bizarre questionnaire to the employee's co-workers. The FBI sent at least three co-workers a list of queries that began with the instruction, quote, you have a duty to reply to the questions. Should you refuse to answer or fail to reply fully and truthfully, action against your security clearance may be undertaken. Basically what that means is you could lose your job. You'll still be working here, but you won't be paid. That's a threat. Co-workers were then asked if they heard the employee, quote, vocalize support for President Trump, vocalize objections to COVID-19 vaccination and they provide a screenshot of the document. Otter still was the vocalized objection to COVID-19 vaccination question. The query took place in April 2022, five months after President Joe Biden was upbraided by PolitiFact for saying you must get the vaccine so you do not spread the disease, and four months after Tex a Texas jug issued, judge issued an injunction invalidating a federal vaccine mandate. If the FBI ever had a legitimate issue with an employee whining about a potential bureau requirement for vaccination, by April 2022, that was already a national non-problem as whether or not a person got vaccinated was officially his or her own business. These documents look like evidence of the FBI investigating the political beliefs of employees. Instead of limiting its investigation to legitimate issues, as Empower President Tristan Levin wrote, the Security Division acted as if support for President Trump objecting to COVID-19 vaccinations or lawfully attending a protest was the equivalent of being a member of Al-Qaeda. Now, that might be a little bit of hyperbole, but you get the point. I mean, come on, man. This is far far out of bounds for, for the FBI. And I have no doubt in my mind that it's the same in every country in the world now. The corruption has just spread and spread and spread and spread, and it's everywhere. And boy, do we, you know, if you're familiar with the Aegean, Aegean stables, we have a lot of work to do. A lot of work to do. And the kind of work I do is to pray because I don't have the power to change these things, but God does. So that's the news for the day. I pray that you will have a blessed day, that your day today, right now, will be as wonderful as it can possibly be, and that you enjoy every single minute of it. This is the Vietnam Era Vet, out.